Hello and welcome to another edition of Good Morning Patia, Patia Channel's very own breakfast show. I'm your host, Nick Pendrell, and joining me once again is the lovely Kunjeeb. How are you good morning, how are you? <laughs> I'm very good, I'm very good. <laughs> I'm good too. We have another familiar face with us for anybody who yes. is following the local music scene, and that's Graham Sears. That's me, I'm afraid, yeah. Thank you for coming to join us. My pleasure. So tell us, what brought you to Patia in the first place? I'm trying to avoid the obvious thing, an aeroplane. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, 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 a, it's a strange story. I mean, as um, a good friend and myself, we'd both um, finished long-term relationships. Mm -hmm. And a friend of his suggested we come you know, take a holiday. Right. Mm. And he'd been here and he told us, he didn't tell us exactly what it was about, <laughs> but he told us about this place. He said, it's great. He said, you, you'll uh. like it. So totally naive to the whole scene <laughs> we arrived mm -hmm. and it's a life-changing experience sure. i mean anyone who, who's been here you cannot come here once mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. your first time your life has changed forever so which yeah. year was this oh, that's probably about 10 11 years ago now oh, something right. like fair, that yeah. Fair old while yeah yeah and, and did you ever go back off this holiday or did you just stay well the the, the original holiday? holiday um yeah i mean it, it got a, a a time limit but I mean I think the most people that, that they come here the first time that trip back on the plane mm. you're working out when you can get back again right right <laughs> yeah um, so that, that was the same thing I was I, it takes it's just some time to get the money together yeah to be able to come back again right and third time I didn't go back. You didn't go back. No, it's the usual thing. You find someone and you think that's it. In the end, it turns out it wasn't. But <laughs> <laughs> you learn to understand what goes on here, how it works. Yeah. Um, what I say to people is like, this is this is Disneyland for adults. Oh, absolutely. You enjoy yeah. the rides, but don't take it seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Very good analogy. No, I, I thought so. Yeah. That's... So, were you uh, involved in music back in the UK? All my life. Mm. I was um, playing in bands when I was still at school. Mm -hmm. um, Which instrument do you play? Sorry? Which instrument? Bass play. Bass play. Uh, ba yeah. Uh -huh. And you sing too? Do you sing too? Can you sing too? Uh, Backing vocals? Back, yes. That, yeah, we'll, we'll stick right. with that. <laughs> I'm not, not a frontman vocalist, but I mean, I can mm. put a few harmonies in on that, yeah. Uh, okay. Right, so you start I mean, My original thing, I, I started as a drummer. Oh, okay. I then went to guitar, and what used to happen, um, nobody quite knows where this music thing came from in the family. Right. And Dad was quite keen on, it. his thing was big bands. Mm -hmm. Um and he, he told me once there's this thing, he, he liked messing about with electronics mm -hmm. uh -huh. and he made the hi-fi systems. And he said he used to have this battle on a Sunday because the Salvation Army band would come around. Right. And he'd blast Stan Kenton at them as loud as he could <laughs> <laughs> his competition. <laughs> so that, that was his, his so thing, that, that's the, the big band. History. But um, what used to happen is that... Um, on a Saturday, him and I would go out. I'm, in, I'm from Bournemouth, the right. South Coast mm -hmm. originally. We used to go out, we'd go around all the local music shops, mm -hmm. and we'd get to know the people around there, and we started acquiring instruments. Okay. Um, as I say, my original thing was drums, mm -hmm. uh -huh. then I went to guitar, and then from getting to know these people in the music shops, one of them said, oh, we know somebody, mm -hmm. a band, that are looking for a bass player. Yeah. So, Dad was sort of set it up. I didn't really know much about it. I came, mm -hmm. came home from, from school one day, and she says, all right, we're going out tonight. We've got an audition. Said, <laughs> <laughs> he's been out. He's got a bass amp right. and some stuff. I go on audition for this band and get the job. Wow. <laughs> all without you knowing in advance. Yeah. It was a very, very strange situation. I mean, it's, the first gig was on Christmas in this hotel. Mm. <sighs> <laughs> you know, the deep end, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not a little pub gig or anything like that. It's straight as a proper do, you know. The, the, the band actually had a whole management system that was... It was very, very one. Well run. Real one. Yeah. <laughs> so what sort of era was this that you were starting off in music? Uh, 70s. Yeah. 70s. Yeah. 70s, yeah. Well, I, I, 
it frightens me where time has gone. Oh, no. That's scary, isn't <laughs> it? And people say, how old are you? I, say, I forgot. <laughs> I don't know. Because, <laughs> I mean, you start working it out and I'm thinking, it was... No, that can't be right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just time. Well, the, the thing is, when, when you're young, mm. you're looking for this point where you become an adult. Mm. I'm you still waiting. Time, but yeah. I'm still waiting. <laughs> <laughs> So that was your, your early days in music, and did, did that become your career, or was yep. it a sideline? Yeah, but always, always done it, always been playing. Mm -hmm. One band to another, moving about and progressing up in levels. Mm -hmm. Right. So what was uh, the, the, the type of bands that you were playing in? Because if you started off in the 70s and you came here about 2000, what were you doing in the 80s and 90s then? Various things. I mean, the, the sort of bands I've played with. I mean, originally it was like um, pop of that era. Yeah. Mm. You know, um, I was actually in a bluegrass band at one point. Right. Banjo, violin, mm -hmm. the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I don't quite know how that came about. <laughs> Shows you um, versatility, but then it was a sort of progressive rock band doing weird stuff. Mm. Um, and then later on, I uh, I got a job managing a music store in Bournemouth. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, I'm meeting even more musicians. Sure, sure. And what I ended up was like, I was doing things with various different people. Right, yeah. And I'd have people come into the shop and say, oh, I saw you with... But aren't you with... And I'm trying to explain to them, I'm a musician, I mm. play, I don't belong no. to a band. You know, we do this with this one, we yeah. do this with this one, yeah, we all have a good time. Yeah. Yeah. This, this thing where people get, it's like, I'm in this band, yeah. that is what I do. That's, it's very blinkered. Right, well, yeah. people have a picture of you mm -hmm. in that band. That is, that, yeah, that, that is all there is. You no. belong there, no. and that's it. I mean, I was playing in um, a sort of straight-ahead rock band. Mm. I mean, I was also in a jazz funk thing as yeah. well. So I'm getting yeah. to do loads of stuff. Yeah, I'm that's nice. That's keeping it interesting. <laughs> it was good fun. So, can you name drop a bit any celebrities that you rub shoulders with during your musical career? So I, I don't know about rubbing shoulders, but we've done some... <laughs> uh, <laughs> playing bass with. Uh, it's, it's, it's mainly guilt by association. Right. For, okay. And with bands, because I mean, I've, I've done um, recordings and stuff that I don't even know about. <laughs> really? Um, I, I, just just mm. diverting on that. The strangest thing I ever did once, I turned up to this session mm. and I set up and they ran the, the track and I played along mm. with it. I thought, right, okay. So we do a take. Mm -hmm. He said, no, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, well, that can't be. <laughs> what I found out later is they just wanted to sample my sound. Oh, right. <laughs> So you could have been playing anything. Well, uh, yeah, so I could be on things <laughs> I don't even know about. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's um, the main sort of band that I was with. Um, we were sort of like a commitments mm -hmm. star, big, oh, okay. big yeah. thing like that. Um, yeah. It was run by a guy called Howie Casey, mm -hmm. um, who had. Um, He's had a lot of success over the years, but his main thing was years ago, um, he had his band Harry Casey and the Seniors. Right. And they were from Liverpool, mm -hmm. and they went over to Germany, and they were playing there. And the one thing, he, he admits this to himself, it's the one thing he'll never live down. Mm -hmm. He got a call from his agent, and said, look, we're sending these young guys over. He goes, oh, no, not them. <laughs> Because when he first saw them, they didn't have a drummer. They'd turned up to an audition, and it was awful. All right. So that was the impression he'd got. Mm. The Beatles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And years later, of course, he ended up with Wings. He was good friends oh, with Paul. Right. Um, look at the Band on the Run album. Mm. Down the back, all the horn section, Howie Casey. Oh, right. um, his wife, Sheila, um, God rest her soul, she died a couple of years back. Fantastic. Singer, really good. Did a lot of stuff with James Last. Right. Mm -hmm. um, it's very big in Germany. Uh, the drummer was uh, Paul Gill from Alvin Stardust. Mm -hmm. Had guitarist Martin Jenner, who actually did all the. Ah, oh, I've forgotten the name of the band now. Scotch Bay City Rollers. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. That's him. Oh, okay. <laughs> so he did all that stuff. Um, did a lot of work with Elkie Brooks, mm. um, Cliff, um, loads and loads of session stuff. Yeah. Amazing, amazing player. Mm -hmm. Nice guy. 
unfortunately, he's not around anymore. Oh, he, that's a shame. He spent a lot of time trying to get to Australia. Right. Mm -hmm. Finally got there, and a couple of years later, he oh, passed on. What a sad story. Lovely, lovely guy. A yeah. um, couple of other ones. One of the trombone player. He did a lot of shows with people like Danny LaRue and oh, that. Right, yeah. Uh, we also had a thing, he'd, he'd book, like, book in so many mm. gigs for himself, mm. and it was like a standing joke. We'd finish one gig and say, oh, I've got to go. Got to go. <laughs> it's off to the next <laughs> one. Go straight on to do another one, yeah. No, we had some good times. Yeah. yeah. Um, Let, let's bring things up a little bit more today. So talk okay. about Patia. Patia. And, uh, so you arrived here about 11 uh, years ago, and uh, what, what, what became your involvement with music locally? Um, well, originally, I mean, I, I, I worked for Tony, Mm -hmm. um, and I originally got to know him through the right. music, mm -hmm. um, which has led to other things. But the main point was here, the initial draw was this place, the Blues Factory. Mm -hmm. um, Alas, yeah, no, that one. Uh, yeah, no longer. No, that one. Oh, it's gone. Sad, very sad day, very sad day. Um, through there, I became good friends with Lam Morrison. Mm -hmm. oh. um, a lot of people on the local scene, and even... Um, Friends from his circle, what um, Pomjai Olan, mm. the Olan project, and a lot of local people. There's some really, really great players. Mm -hmm. In, in Patia, I am so amazed at the level yeah. of quality yeah. of the players. Um, away from the Thai side, you've got a lot of Filipinos here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's very good. Who do very, very good. There's one band in particular I know, um, they play at Utopia now. Mm hmm. Harmonies are unbelievable. Mm, 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 Think of Toto. Talented. It's the same as a record. Mm, they mm, really, mm. really are good. Yeah. There's one thing I found the Filipinos are good at is copying stuff. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Very good at it. Yeah, Do yeah, very yeah, well. Yeah. 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 Um, several places around town for, for jamming, but a lot of the Thai bands are quite happy mm -hmm. that you get up and join in. Mm. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I know a lot of the musicians here, mm -hmm. and a lot of the musicians here know me that I don't even know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I've had that before. I walk past a bar and the guys go, hey, come on. <laughs> I don't know them. They know me. Oh, well. So where can we see you then? Do you have... Uh, where can you... Uh, they're sitting here right now. No, I mean, you, you play regularly somewhere now. Um, I've got a little outfit um, I'm doing about two or three nights a week with. Right. Um, at Tony's on Walking Street. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, this little rock band. I've got fabulous, fabulous guitarist, um, mm -hmm. Swiss guy, Paul Camilleri. Right. Uh, we're doing some lovely stuff, doing some of his originals. He's got a, a band over in Europe that he mm. has to go off and tour with. Um, but we're doing this a few nights a week, and then I go out and jam various different places when I can. All right. So w which nights a week can we see you at the Tony's on Walking Street? It, it varies. Yeah. It's usually Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay. Um, but as I say, things... Things change yeah, quite a bit. Yeah. Um, but what sort of time do you go on normally? Uh, again, that varies. <laughs> the, the latest thing we're doing now is we go on about 11. Okay. Um, we do one set about an hour and a half. Right. Oh, no. A lot of 45 minutes set, we do an hour and a half. That's, that's oh. a good game. So you, you just have, sorry, you just have one. When, when Paul gets going, you don't <laughs> like to stop. <laughs> <laughs> and you just have one session a night there, if on the night that you go play there. So just one session? <laughs> Just one set. Uh, yep. Yeah. Just one yep. set. And what, what sort of what are some of the highlights from your set? What sort of tracks can we expect? Um, what what, what are the it, crowd pleasers? What, it, what, what it, sounds it, it, crazy? Blues, blues rock. I mean, yeah. from ZZ Top. Mm -hmm. um, along that line. Yeah. But it, it's, yeah. it's it's power. Mm -hmm. Power rock with a bluesy tone to it. Um, and so you mentioned the guitarist as yourself on bass. Uh, and Tony's version of drummer. Oh, yeah. There's Russian guy, Andrew. So very the, good, the very good player. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just a three-piece. Oh, okay. that, that's been my background. I've always been, most of the time, in a three-piece band. Right. Was, uh, was originally, mm. three-piece. Yeah. And that's that's what I'm used to. Right. So when you get to a bigger band, you've got to, oh, hang on, I've got to pull back, I've got to do less because there's more going on. The three-piece, you've you, got range like, to sort yeah, of let yeah. out and do a bit more. Yeah. That, that's nice. Yeah, I enjoy it. So, uh, that's the place to go. If anybody wants to see you, head down to Tony's, sort of towards the Tony's weekend, Walking Street, hopefully they will... Opposite uh, the Simon Complex. They will uh, uh, try and find you. And uh, and I'm sure you keep popping up at uh, various jamming uh, spots More as well. More than likely. We will actually be moving to a new place we've got. It's mm. an Apple. 
Apple. Oh, yeah, I've heard We're that. going to be playing there soon. Um, not quite sure when exactly, but things will be moving up there. It's, Great. It's what was play yeah. before on Walking Street. No, it's now no, Tony's Apple. Apple. Great. So thank you very much for coming in and telling thank us you for all about me. you. And, thank uh, you. And all our viewers, stay tuned for part two. Thank you.